Hi, I'm Jeff Brown, lab coordinator for BSC 2011L, and I'm going to give a quick overview of what you need to know for the methodology for your bean beetle experiment, which is otherwise known as the oviposition choice experiment for the ecology unit four of Bio2 lab, okay? Because you guys were not able to actually set up your experiments, I'm going to give you kind of a range of how these experiments were set up so that you can write up your methodology part of your uh, ecology paper. First thing I'm going to talk about is the bean beetles and how they were actually, what treatment they were in before we set up the experiments for you, which is an important part of what you were write, write about in your first paragraph in your methodology section. So the bean beetles were cultured by the biology staff. We had, uh, we normally culture them on three different types of beans. You can see that all of these were cultured using one layer, different types of containers basically one layer of beans, black-eyed peas, mung beans, it's roughly one layer, and adzuki beans. And if you've read the Bean Beetle website, It would have told you that uh, typically uh, the bean beetles take about four to five weeks, depending on the type of bean. Um, we've read, what we found is that the adzuki beans take about five weeks, the mung and the black eyed peas take about three weeks for the females to emerge. The important thing is that the beans that you're going to be using in your experiment were either raised on azuki, mung, or black-eyed peas. So basically, we set these up before your experiment so that when you set them up for the experiment, you should have bean beetles that have hatched out. If you look closely, you'll see some of the adults that are moving around on the plate and you'll see those little white specks on the beans. Those are eggs, either that have not hatched or will be hatching. And uh, you would also find, if you looked close, you'd see a hole about an eighth of an inch where the bean beetle has emerged after spending three weeks eating its way into adulthood. So, Basically, before the experiment, before setting them up, those beans were incubated in our incubators in the back and uh, ready for you guys to, to choose which ones you're going to use for your experiment. So, how do we get them into our, uh, to set up our experiments? Basically, what we would do is take what we call a bean beetle corral. I'll take one of these Petri dishes that have had the bean beetles in them. And what I like to do is put about maybe half of them in a corral easier to catch them in a, when they're spread out a little bit. You can see these, they're a little frisky. These are seem in pretty good shape. It's a good choice. So that's the first thing that I want to look for is uh, bean beetles that are pretty lively. You can see them um, kind of moving around in there. And for now I'm going to put this lid on here until we discuss the next important tool and that is uh, the aspirator. This is a common 
instrument that's used to collect small insects. And we've put in the set that we provide for each student, there are two vials. One, uh, we've put uh, a male and female symbol on the front, male, female. And uh, basically, this aspirator has a uh, little rubber top on it. It has a metal, metal straw. That's the intake. And has an outtake, which is uh, this little piece here. And it has a rubber hose, all right? It's kind of um, useful for basically uh, drawing in, catching the beetles drawing them into the tube and there's a little micro filter that prevents the beetles from actually um, being sucked into the tube from where you're drawing um, air from. So let me grab a cap So before we start sorting the males from the females, we need to know what the male and female looks like. So uh, this is a uh, fairly popular drawing that it appears in the Bean Beetle website, and you can find it online pretty much. Um, the females are slightly larger than the males. They have a lar longer abdomen, and if you look very carefully, and I strongly suggest everyone do this, under a dissecting scope, it's fairly obvious that there is a kind of a white racing stripe down the center of the abdomen. And um, the males, this picture makes the abdomen look fairly rounded, but from my observation, it's almost a blunt, flat end. Now, you have to be very careful because sometimes I've found females that are either freshly emerged or just in the container. They may be smaller or about the same size as the male, but the telltale part is this, um, this racing stripe down the middle. That's what I go to. And the males, like I said, typically are smaller, uh, but it's the females that I see that is um, very uh, different in, in size. Okay, so, um, for your experiment, we've provided, um, suggested that you have access to uh, 10 males, 10 females. Really and truly, you don't need that many uh, males. Um, we suggest that you set up uh, your uh, three treatments. Um, so there's a variety of different ways that you can do that. But um, the types of Petri dishes that we have offered are these uh, choice chambers. It has a little chamber in the middle. Obviously it looks like you put a choice of two different beans types that are on either side here. I prefer that, um, I would suggest that students either use a uh, one of these divided chambers, divided Petri dishes. Here's one that has four sections. There's some that have, uh, here's a different type of four sections. And you can see there's enough space for the bean beetles to crawl over uh, the, the little wall separating the different sections. There's also some with only two. And we also have one, oh, some that have three sections, all right? So, what, another option is to, um, what I did the other day and what I'm probably going to do today, 
is to use this kind of a four section or the two section to um, sort out the number of beans that you want your female to choose to lay her eggs on. And I just use this for getting a relative amount and then I transferred them into um, a larger uh, container. Uh, what I found after I put the beans in this Petri dish was that some, of, depending on the type of bean you chose, there was less room for them to travel from one section to the other. And so I just merely used it to count uh, to get the right number of beans and then I just turned it over and put them here. And um, that meant that this Petri dish wasn't completely full, but it was pretty close and it gave the bean beetles a little bit more room to, to move around in. It's up to you. Uh, let me get just so I can demonstrate that later. Okay, so now the hunt. Um, it's always good when you're using these or even when you're sorting them out here, sorry, that you give a, a gentle kind of a slap. And um, I see that I already have an escapee. That's a little male, if you can see that. See how it's brown? Whoops, there it is. <laughs> uh, it's brown in color, like a chestnut color, and the abdomen is kind of uh, flattened off at the bottom. And I'll show you a female. That is a female. I don't know if it's showing up. You can see the abdomen, and there you could just, I can see it with my bare eyes, not uh, without using the dissecting scope, that it does have a little white racing stripe down the middle of the abdomen. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is knowing, first of all, um, my experiment today, um, I am going to do an experiment. Here's our array of beans that we have to choose from. Um, and we have a variety. Uh, natal beans would be the the beans that the uh, bean beetles were laid on in the first place. So for those that might be interested in checking to see, does the female choose a bean that she herself was raised on? And so we have our zuki, we have our mung beans, and we have our black-eyed peas, otherwise known as cow peas. Um, we have a variety of sizes, uh, large and small lima beans. So you can check them. We have uh, northern beans, those are white. We have um, also navy beans. Uh, we don't have any here today, but um, we have kidney beans. We have pinto beans that have a variety of different uh, colors on them. We have garbanzo beans, which is of a different texture. Um, small red beans, so there are a variety of sizes, a variety of colors, a variety of textures, some with different patterns on them. Um, so all of these containers also have a um, nutritional content for the beans. Um, any beans that you buy in the marketplace is required to provide a nutritional content. So this has um, some pretty straightforward fat, cholesterol, sodium, sugars, etc., etc. So um, could the female be choosing one of those um, different variables when she's making a choice for her beans? We don't know, that's why you're running the experiment. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do my experiment. I'm gonna lay out. Um, uh, I've heard that black beans are actually toxic to um, to bean beetles. So I'm going to choose two beans and I'm just grabbing another container. I'm going to go ahead and set up my experiment here. And I'm using these to, to set out a relative number. 
And again, um, one of the things that we try and tell people in the lab is make sure you keep the lids closed because bean beetles do escape and they find their way into getting into these containers, which is not a good thing. If you open up a container, it already has beans in it or bean beetles. That is a problem. It's going to screw up your experiment. So I am, what I'm going to do is just simply see how many actually fit in that container. Alternately, you could count them, but um, beans are of nature. Um, sometimes they come in different sizes. So I'm trying to minimize the impact of surface area, which is another variable that you could uh, be observing. So uh, as you can see, it pretty much have as many as can fit in one space. Okay. Now I'm going to try and minimize the roll of. Uh, I want to have find a different bean, and um, I'm going to try and minimize the confounding variable of size. So I'm going to try and find a bean that's relatively small, like that one. Um, I'm going to avoid using the mung bean in case I'm, or the adzuki, since those are what the beans were originally laid on. So I'm going to choose these uh, small red beans. Look like they're fairly close in size. There may be something smaller, but for the for speed's sake, and again, I'm not going to bother counting, although I could, but I'm just going to use as many as fit in that space. I'm assuming that there's going to be a fairly similar amount of surface area for them if they're all fitting in the same spot. So that's what I'm going for. Okay, there they are. I'm gonna close that back up again so that nothing else gets in. Those are small red beans and black beans. Okay, now for the One thing that I'm considering, um, and again, um, you all have done a variety of different experiments. Mine, I'm choosing a bean that there's some literature that says that they are toxic, but what we don't know is whether it's toxic, uh, even if it's toxic, will the female still choose the, the bean? Um, I'm assuming that there isn't an odor on it, but we'll find out. That's what's gonna happen when the experiment runs through. Um, we do know that uh, female bean beetles will lay eggs. We found eggs on the plastic containers. That can't be nutritionally important or attractive to the bean beetles, so I don't really care. We're just trying to see if there's some other variable that she's choosing uh, when she's laying her, laying her eggs. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so back to the, back to the aspirator. Um, this is a very common instrument. We want them to survive through the next week. Uh, bean beetles only live nine to 14 days. So we want to make sure that um, I'm going to try and catch the healthiest females. I want to avoid handling them a lot. That's why I really like using the aspirator. I've seen people use tweezers or a number of different instruments or pick them up with their fingers. Uh, just imagine a giant pair of fingers coming down and picking you up if you were the size of a beetle. Um, we don't want to stress them out. We don't want to hurt them. Um, and um, I don't want to hurt myself either. That's why I'm using this 70% uh, ethanol to clean off any germs that might be there before me. And uh, we ask you to do the same thing after you're done. Um, I know people are a little squeamish about using something that has already been used by someone else. Um, you can squirt a little bit down on the inside of this. Um, alternately, you can also use a Kim wipe. 
can use a Kim wipe to place over the end and to kind of draw through that. Maybe one layer is probably better. Uh, but in any case, I feel pretty confident that I've cleaned that off pretty well. So I'm just going to use it and draw on this end to find my, my females. So, um, so basically what I do, I work fairly quickly. I know that I need 10 females to set up an experiment, or at least nine uh, for my three replicates. Um, what I'm going to do is, this already has a male um, marked tape on it, so I'm going to grab this male right here. And I heard the telltale little thud, so there's my first one. So what I'm going to do is find my, my uh, the other males here. So there's one, two, you can see this little guy right here, three, four, five, six, seven, so I need uh, two, four, six, I need six, so I already got seven. Let me get a few more. So this is a good, this is a good container because there's quite a few that are right here. That's eight. I'll get one more. Uh, nine. So I have nine healthy males. I can look it over. Nine healthy males to choose from. And uh, so I'll be able to check them out. So uh, again, here's a little cap. I'll just tap this a few times. Make sure they're away from the exit. And I'll put that cap on there. And now I'm on the hunt for females. So let me look around here first of all. Again, um, after having kind of observed these under the uh, dissecting scope, I'm pretty confident about my ability to check out males or females. But sometimes you need to go back and, and uh, look under the dissecting scope. That's a female. So I need nine, right? So I'll probably catch about 12 or 13, depending on how healthy they look. One, two, three, mm, here's one that is, poor guy. He's still emerging from the bean, see them? Let's see if I can give him a little help. You can do it, guy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. He's like, there we go. Freshly free is a male. I don't need him. Let's see here. Okay, I'm starting to run out of females. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's one. Again, I, first telltale is the size. She's fairly large. Okay. I think I just sucked her right out of the egg, <laughs> the bean. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, I've corralled all that I could out of here. I'm going to go back to my original source. And I'm going to just pour the rest of those in the corral. And you can see, oh, there's a female. They're almost black. I mean, they are black compared to the males. The males are definitely a browner chestnut color. Let's see, I got one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, looks like ten. And this is exactly what I was telling you about. 
Oh, it's just a very small female. Looks like a male. Just check and see if there's any more left. 11. And that's about it. That's good. I think those are pretty, pretty healthy looking. There's 12. Good. I have enough to choose from. All right. Let me put this over. Okay. So, what I'm going to do to be quick about this is um, I'm going to go ahead and set up my other three. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so I've collected around 10 males and around 12 females. So now I'm ready to put them in my three trials that I've set up using uh, three different types, or, sorry, uh, two different types of beans, the black beans and the little red beans. And I'm um, gonna be checking to see whether the female chooses the red beans or what has been known to be toxic to the, uh, the bean beetle, black beans. Um, but does she still cho choose it regardless? So, we have suggested that you use two males to three females in each treatment. Males are known to be um, kind of, um, I would say, maybe traumatic uh, inseminators. In other words, during copulation, it's basically injecting the spermatophore anywhere in the female's body. And so, um, in some species, that's known to be a little traumatic. Um, I don't know how much it's been tested in bean beetles, but uh, just we just want to make sure we have two healthy males for each of these. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, I'm just going to use a little spatula. Um, these are pretty active little guys, so they're already climbing up towards the cap. So what I'm going to do is just open and find two males that are fairly active. And there's two right there. I'm just going to easily just kind of toss them in there. And I'm going to cover this back up again. And rather than go on to the other two, I just want to make sure I don't lose count um, whenever I put the females in. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to draw on this one more time. Make sure that there aren't any females that have tried to crawl back out. And I'm gonna open this up. And I'm gonna get the first two females that are towards the top. Fairly random, but I know they're pretty active. Uh, I'm sorry, the first three. So there, I have my three females and two males. That one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this. And I'm going to right away take just some regular old, it's just masking tape. And I just want to make sure that there's no way that these guys are going to get out. I'm going to go ahead and cover that up and move on to the next. Again, my two males first. There's one. And again, I'm being careful, I know I'm being deliberate, but quick, so that I'm not harming the male when I'm putting them down there. I don't wanna knock off a leg or anything else that's gonna harm him, because I wanna make sure that he gets to inseminate, copulate with, uh, with this female so that she can lay every one of her 80 eggs. All right, here's one, a female now. Again, three is one. And I have one eye on the container. Two and three. Oops, did I get three? Uh, one. See, these are good and healthy. These are perfect. All right. And because it looked like there was, I wasn't quite sure if that female got out of there, got in there. I got enough here. 
There's a female right there, and she's in there, okay? Again, I'm gonna go back and make sure that I don't have to re-count. I know for sure these, with just regular masking tape, is marked. And now I'm going with my males. Again, there's one. Uh, looks like a good, healthy guy. And I got four to choose from. And be careful with them. And there we go. Um, I'm avoiding picking them up with my fingers because it's a lot clumsier to work with your fingers than it is with a spatula. All right, now I need three more females. Make sure these guys are there. There's one. Uh, there's two, definitely a female. I'm double checking. And there's three. Okay. Successfully. Set up my third trial. Okay. And then I'm going to, one last thing to do. I have two options. One, to go right ahead and label today's date, which is the 31st. And uh, I'm gonna label what type of beans I have on here, black beans and red. Small red beans is what they call. And my name and the group number I'm in and my section number and my TA so that I know right away and anyone that's taking care of these knows um, what's going on in there. What's the experiment? What's the variable? What type of beans that are there? Should they get all mixed up? And um, so, and that's it. One thing I could have done, as I talked about before, is rather than leave them in this container, these beans aren't that bad, but I was setting some other experiments up with larger beans, and um, I was concerned that there wasn't enough headway for them to get from one wall to the next. What I could do is put them in another Petri dish, even with the beans in them, even with the beetles in them, I just kind of toss it in there. And what I want to do in this case is um, I'm not going to bother trying to replenish it. I'm just going to kind of put them in there. And you can see it's pretty much, um, it's a little bit of space in between. If I used a glass Petri dish, it might have been a little bit more room. The thing that's consistent is the it's a little bit more room in there. It's not packed full, but I know that the surface area of all the beans that I put in this container was a reasonable amount. It's not packed full, but that gives the uh, the the beetles a little bit more room to move around. Okay. One thing that I might want to do though, is I see now I'm going to replace this one bean because I noticed that it's not the best quality bean. It has the cover, the cotyledons is broken. Um, I do know that the, there is a different nutritional co content most likely in the cover of the bean than what is inside. And that could be a confounding variable. Does that mean that the bean female won't choose that bean? The bean beetle won't choose that bean? Or, um, you know, is there, will she try and lay the egg always on the inside? So, um, so I'm gonna do is replace that black bean. That's part of my quality control and setting up my experiment. Okay, and I think 
that concludes the actual putting them in and setting up the experiment. What you also want to include in the methodology is what kind of storage, where are you going to store these? Um, all the beans are stored actually here in 1071 for the purposes of uh, how this uh, course is going on. Um, typically we would just put them in a shelf in the prep room and that's where students would go to retrieve their experiments and count the number of eggs that are have been laid on each of the each of the beans. The other thing you need to include is a little bit about um, how you're going to do your statistical analysis. Um, I'm going to use chi-square um, but it really depends on how you setting up the experiment. So you need to write a little bit about that in your methods. Um, and what I would also recommend that you do as you're writing up your methods paper, part of the paper, is that you refer to the student manual. And this is where it uh, provides the, um, what you actually want to write in the at least three paragraphs for your methods part. Um, you don't necessarily need to do any, um, have any references. Um, but uh, you might, it just depends. Uh, but you will want to include, so basically your content is the condition of the organism that you started with, where they were, you know, if there was any pretreatment that had to be done, and then your second paragraph is actually the experimental details, how you set it up, why, um, you know, how you chose your, your beans to set up the experiment, and so on. And then the last paragraph is then data collection. How are you going to go about collecting it? Um, what statistical analysis you were used and the data that was collected. Okay? I'm basically going to be collecting the number of eggs that I found on the beans. So I'll be using my dissecting scope to kind of count and see how many, how many beans had eggs on them and how many eggs were laid per bean, if, if at all. We'll just have to see what, how the female has chosen to lay her eggs. And that concludes, uh, I think, most information that you need of what goes into the methodology part of the paper. Uh, please contact your TA if you have any questions, and uh, good luck.